In this session, let's try to explore the closure properties of regular languages. Let's talk with an informal introduction. This is the tomato at my garden. Let's say this is the tomato at my neighbor's garden. I am informed of the characteristics of both the tomatoes. What I need is to combine the characteristics of these two and to arrive at a hybrid plant. So what I will do, I'll just create a hybrid among these two. But the hybrid need not to end in what I expect. It may need an end in different types depending on what kind of hybridization I give. It may come in a different color. It may come in a different size. It may have both the characteristic. It may come in the reverse color of this. Anything and any, everything may happen. Why are we talking about this? How is it related to our subject of interest today? This is what we were describing about. Now, like the same manner you assume, we have a regular expression R1 producing a language L of R1. It is, what is language? It is nothing but set of words. W1, W2 and so on up to WN, something it has. Now that, on to my right, I have a tomato. Assume there is another regular expression R2 which is producing a language called L of R2. Again, it's a language. So, let us assume W1, W2 and WM be the words of that language. These languages may be finite or infinite depending on the context of usage. Now that we want to produce or we want to apply hybridization for these two. Given two sets, what are the hybrid operations that you can You know very well than me. It's all that set operations that you can do. Be it union, intersection, complement, reversal, concatenation, anything and everything that you can do with the set theory. What's expected? What are we trying to expect out of it? See, when we are hybridizing a tomato with another tomato, we expect a tomato to be the result, not a pumpkin. We want an eatable at least as an output, not in any other case. So, given two regular languages, R1 and R2, I may be interested in knowing by the application of any of these operations, can the resultant is also regular. Hope the idea is clear here. So, this is what R we are going to do. Given two regular languages, R1 and R2, we are going to apply some set operation, which will result in R1 operation R2. And we are going to check whether it is a regular language or not. So what are the operations that you can apply? We know there are three basic operations that are supported. Union, concatenation and then clean closure. These are the basic operations that we can do with the regular languages. And also the set theory. Extending this, what are the different operations we do have? Intersection of two languages you can identify which will give you the common words that are there in both the languages followed by the complement of a language. You have an universal set. All the words that are in the universal set that are not in that particular language will come under the complement. Then reversal. If AB is a string, BA will be its reversal. You have homomorphism. Replacement of one symbol for another symbol. Inverse homomorph in homomorphism, it's the reverse of that. Other operations are also there. Any set operation, we may be interested to know whether these or application of these operations are closed or not. Let's apply the basic operations of regular expressions and try to check whether the languages are closed. Basic operations. The first operation is union. So let R1 and R2 be our two regular languages. Correspondingly, their languages will be L of R1 and L of R2. If you apply an union operation to that, L of R1 union L of R2, whether the resultant is a regular language or not is what we are going to check. How to check? That's the question now, right? Already we have seen that if there exists a regular expression, there will exist a finite automata. And we have seen the equivalence between these two. Finally, whether it is a regular expression, which is a mathematical representation, or a finite automata, which is a visual representation, it will end up in recognition of a language, which we call it as regular language. So, when a language, if a language is said to be regular, then there should exist a finite automata and there should be a corresponding regular expression. That's the simple concept. Now, it is given that R1 and R2 are two regular languages. 
leading to L of R1 and L of R2. So, since they are already regular language, there will exist an NFA N1 for R1 and an NFA N2 for R2. Right. So, if you take N1, there will be some start state. We don't know what it is, but there will definitely be a start state. And the number of final states we don't know, it could be many. Right. It may be many or it may be single. So, that is up to the design of N1. Let this represents the finite automata for N1. Similarly, if you take N2 as a finite automata, it will also have its own start state and n number of final states. This n may be one or many. It depends on the type of problem that is having at hand. So, this represents N2. So, this is already predefined because it was given that R1 and R2 are regular languages and hence N1 and N2 are the corresponding NFAs. Just think of how to create an automata which is the union of these two. So, it is a known fact that when the two languages, that is when two languages are combined using this union operation, the words that this automata accepts and the word that this automata accepts should be the result of that. So, just we will try to draw the union of operations. This is the automata for representing N1, let us say. And similarly, we have an automata. This is a final state. This is a final state. This could be any. This is an automata representing N2. Now, what to do? Just it is enough to create a new start state. And just by applying the epsilon transitions to the new start state, we can achieve recognizing words that are part of N1 and that are part of N2, right? So, if you move through this path, you can reach any of the final state. If you move through this path, you can reach any of the final state. See, there are two concepts over here. Some of you may be think, may think, why not to combine these final states together into a single final state? To make a decision or to arrive at a decision on that, we should clearly know what state means. So, this state, when you reach this state, it indicates the system to do a particular operation. Let us say, if all the final states correspond to single operation, yes, your concept is right. All of you can combine your final states to a single final state because this is going to be the final operation. But if you want to differentiate one final state from another final state, giving them individual tasks, then it is not advisable to segregate. But anyway, just this is a representation. You can create a new start state, combine the start states of the existing NFA using epsilon transition. That's it. You have got a finite automata. And by definition, when there exists a finite automata, there will exist a regular expression. And these two will accept a regular language called regular language. And hence, this union operation is said to be closed. Closed in the sense, if you apply union of union operation to two regular languages, resultant is also regular. The second operation that we are going to discuss is the concatenation of two regular languages. So, given two languages are L of R1 and L of R2, we are going to test whether L of R1 dot L of R2 is regular or not. We have seen already about the concatenation. It is nothing but writing the strings that are in the second language after the strings that are there in the first language. For example, if I take L is equal to A, B, C, D, this is L1 and L2 is equal to E, F, G, H. What is L1 dot L2? A, B followed by E, F and then the first string of the L1, A, B followed by G, H, the second string. And take the second string of first language C, D, combine it with the second language EF. So, second comes CD, GH. That's it. So, already it is informed that R1 and R2 are regular languages and hence we will have N1 and N2. So, this N1 as usual will have a start state with one or more final states. This is the representation of N1. Similarly, for N2, if you take, there will be a start state and you will have N number of final states. It could be one or many, right? So, that depends. Now, what to do? We expect while concatenating N1 and N2, we expect 
the words of n2 to follow n1 so just what we can do create a new start state add it because this is the first set of words that should come in sequence always if you look at the example a b or c d will come first so you, we can add it add an epsilon transition to start with and after completing while reaching the final states over here from any of the final state we should continue with this see from a b also we continued with e f g h from c d also we have continued with any of the strings so combine all the final states to the start state of the new dfa using epsilon transition that's it this is nothing but an automata n which represents l of n1 dot l of n2 so it is possible for us to arrive at a automata for representing the language and hence this is closed coming to the third basic operation clean closure right this is an unary operation we know and when r1 is a regular language there will exist an automata n1 let's say you have as usual one start state and one or more final states for representing the automata n1 that represents the regular expression r1 and the language l of r1 what to do now we are in need to create a clean closure for this there are multiple ways as usual like thomson construction you can either create a start state and a final state you can add up an epsilon transition but a very easier way or a minimal way to do that is if we make because normally when we include epsilon in our language we will make that particular state the start state as the final state right so now what we can do we can create a start state make it as a final state so that this will accept epsilon then for one time transition you can add an epsilon transition to the start state of nfa so automatically it's a fact that a, either of this one transition you should reach in order to make multiple transition see one time then two time three time concatenations it goes on in order to have multiple transitions when you reach the final state of the automata there should be a provision to come back to the start state so this is but through epsilon transition so how many ever be the number of final states you have in the automata you should be able to reach the start state that is what epsilon transition addition means so this is zero time this is one time and this is multiple times and in any case we are in able to draw a finite automata for representing the clean closure operation and hence the regular languages are closed under clean closure operation before uh, having a look at the other closure properties let us uh, understand some of the properties when we apply this union operation let's say if r1 and r2 are two regular languages or regular expressions let's say so whether r1 or r2 is equal to r1 plus r r2 plus r1 is this commutative property holds good just you think of by taking an example l is equal to a b c d l1 l2 is equal to e f g h when i take l1 union l2 or l2 union l1 in either case this will result in only four words a b c d e f g h that's it right either you concatenate this way we are going to add it inside the set or you concatenate this way you can add it in this set okay so this commutative property can be increased to any number of regular expressions right so r1 plus r2 plus r3 this is the same as r1 plus r2 plus r3 because anyway you are going to just combine the words put together onto a common slot right next one more important coming to concatenation whether r1 dot r2 is equal to r2 dot r1 hope you always have the confusion of embedding first name and last name which what to put first if this property holds good then you won't have that problem so it it is clearly understood that the concatenation operation is not at all equal okay so the same you can check here l1 dot l2 what are the words you have a b e f c d e f and then a b g h C D G H. 
same if you go for l2 dot l1 what are the operation words you can have efab ghab ghcd which is not at all equivalent so this commutative property won't holds good over here so when you combine concatenation and this union together let's say r1 into r2 plus r3 is it equivalent to r1 dot r2 plus r3 no okay this is similar to multiplication and addition okay so you cannot do like that which will change the meaning of the language okay so these properties needs to be clearly understood so i'll stop here for this session we'll continue with rest of the closure properties in the next session